Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Neurop Guru. I'm here with my good friend, Dr. Drew Carey. Drew? Hey, Andy. And today we're going to be talking about the comorbidity and the imaging of Bichette's uveitis and neurobichette's. And Drew, maybe you could just give us a reminder of what is Bichette's? Bichette's is a autoimmune condition that can affect multiple organs. Um, it is uh, commonly presenting with skin rashes, um, venous thrombosis uh, that can be in the leg, uh, lungs, even in the brain. Um, uh, they commonly have GI symptoms, and uveitis is a very common feature as well. Um, so it is certainly something that uveitis specialists and, and eye doctors can see. Um, and neurologic involvement is less common, but uh, can be serious and life-threatening. I, I suppose what this means is that neuroophthalmologists need to know a little bit about Bichette's disease. We do. Yeah, absolutely. And so what was the point of this story? So this was a, a group of UVI specialists um, who took a retrospective look back to see uh, were there imaging or findings on eye exam that might correlate with neuroimaging findings in these patients. Um, and they look, took look at uh, ocular findings as well as symptoms um, and said, you know, what are the predictive value of the eye exam and the history in predicting imaging findings consistent with neurobichettes? In other words, which patients does the eye doctor have to be worried may have neurologic bichettes and needs to coordinate for an MRI scan? What kind of symptoms should they be looking for? So the most common symptom was headache, um, and it, that can include meningeal symptoms, um, and especially if it lasted more than 24 hours with neck stiffness, and certainly if there were seizures, obviously seizures indicated a, uh, you know, a CNS issue. Um, and that's not that uncommon for UVI to specialists to ask about headaches because uh, other uveitic conditions, including sarcoid and ampi, can have CNS vasculitis. Um, that presents with headaches. So they, they commonly ask about that among their patients. Uh, cranial nerve involvement, including double vision, uh, facial nerve palsies, um, problems with speech, problems with uh, smell, problems with taste, or uh, pain and, and optic neuritis uh, was also uh, the second most common and, and very common among those patients. Less common were motor symptoms, so paralysis, spasticity, weakness, um, cerebellar problems, so gait, vertigo, ataxia, and nystagmus. Sensory issues were rare, and cognitive issues um, uncommon. Although one patient didn't have any of those um, uh, and still had uh, neuroimaging findings concerning for CNS inflammation. And so if the disc is swollen, even if we think it's intraocular, we should still scan it? For Bichette's patients, yes, because they also found on the eye exam that um, optic disc uh, staining and leakage on the fluorescein angiogram uh, had a very high risk for uh, Bichette's. Not quite as high as the neurologic symptoms, but it increased the odds ratio uh, 5.4 fold. And it may not be super obvious swelling that we you know commonly see in neuro-ophthalmology clinic. It may just be a hot disc on the fluorescein that they're doing for other uveitic or vasculitis evaluation, you know, looking for CME, um, is there occlusive vasculitis that, that requires urgent ocular treatment? If you see that um, involved in the optic nerve, you know, the optic nerve involvement on the fluorescein, that is highly concerning that there is also uh, a high rate of, of neurobichette's involvement. Should we be scanning all of these patients or only the patients with symptoms and signs? What they did find one patient who did not have any symptoms to have neurologic involvement, but neurologic involvement in Bichette's is is, uh, is a rare manifestation, and uveitis is super common. And um, I I think you know ordering an MRI on every patient with Bichette's is probably overkill. Um, I think our MRI centers are already burdened, and it can be. Uh, weeks and or, or over a month to get a non-urgent MRI and, and adding more patients to that is going to delay care for other patients as well as add unnecessary anxiety to the patient. And then you also have to worry about, you know, the incidental findings. Uh, you know, if you find a one, one or two millimeter aneurysm, uh, you find a two millimeter meningioma, 
totally unrelated. These patients are going to be getting brain scans every six to 12 months for years or the rest of their life uh, and, and unnecessary anxiety. So I prefer to uh, limit imaging to patients where you think they have are at increased risk, uh, such as patients with symptoms, signs, or swollen optic nerve. And we're looking for meningeal enhancement and venous thrombosis. Anything else that we're looking Those for? Those are very common. Um, like it is a multi-organ um, disease, uh, it can involve various um, uh, findings on MRI. So you can have uh, multifocal parenchymal enhancement. You can have white matter lesions that mimic multiple sclerosis. You can have cranial nerve involvement, uh, meningeal thickening like pachymeningitis. You can have Uh, diffuse brain involvement, uh, brain stem. So, um, you know, small vessel white matter disease without enhancement uh, that we see in like migraine patients, hypertensive patients, people over age 50, not so concerning, but large white matter lesions or enhancing lesions suggestive of active uh, inflammation as well as uh, dural thickening enhancement would be highly concerning. So what do you think the take home message for our audience is today? Yeah, so take home message, uh, Bichette's uveitis, you do need to do a review of systems. And if you're seeing a fluorescein angiogram uh, light up the optic nerve, uh, you should be getting an MRI on those patients um, uh, because uh, while rare, they can have neuro Bichette's and that would probably alter management or at least get an additional specialist for further evaluation. Um, and, and you don't want to miss that because it's potentially... Uh, serious disabling or life-threatening complication from Bichette's. Well, thank you again, Dr. Carey. This concludes another edition of the Neurop Guru.